this is Intoxicated Literature. Hello! Welcome to Intoxicated Literature. I am Daniela Drake. And I'm Evelyn Crow. And we are here to discuss Angel's Blood by Nalini Nali Singh. This is actually one of my favorite urban fantasy series. Yeah, I've read the whole thing. Loved it. I, I would say this is right right up there on Paul with um, Alona Andrews. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Urban fantasy. I didn't know what I was getting into, and then I read the first one and just immediately found all the rest of the books that I could read. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes, 100%. And I actually found this after I read her other series. Oh, okay. I so. did the reverse. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Everyone always recommends the other one first. Oh, okay. At least they did for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the first book, but it's with the Psy yeah. Changeling that one Changeling with the more sh- shifter yeah. Psy one. But this one rang more true to me. This one I mm. felt a stronger connection with. Yeah, it's hard. the the side changeling series like it it plays so much on the emotionless versus the like really emotional, which right. I think was harder for me to get into. Yes, yeah, uh, I did read that series as well. Yeah, but I did like this one better. Yeah, yeah, I I really connected with this one. Yeah, more that's and fair. this is going to be an interesting book to talk about because yes. there's so much packed. Into, into this. it yeah absolutely it's setting up so much it really is yeah because the world building that that miss singh puts into this yes. is fascinating fascinating it's so different and unique and so good like yes. she's really thought about how all of these parts work so before we get into it yeah spoilers spoilers uh adult content yep and uh lots of swearing Yep. <laughs> Standard for intoxicated literature. Yes. If you so, haven't figured it out. <laughs> this is how we do it. So this is, this is the do. first episode that you have joined us for. We do all of those things. We will spoil everything for yes. you. So if you haven't read this book yet, push pause, go read the book, yes. come back to us with a drink. Yes. <laughs> and what are we drinking tonight? We are drinking Ambrosia. Which is actually on part, we are doing thing drinks now. It was so. also delicious. It was so good. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. I did not either. I thought it was going to be really really like brandy y yes but the apple brandy and the brandy and the champagne worked really well together and this was exciting because we're actually in the same place i know and we got to go shopping for drinks together it was so fun <laughs> so this it's is a little different apparently this is like an annual thing like yes. once a year we get together we do and do a, a podcast like in the same room together <laughs> so yeah so let's talk about angel's blood like initial thoughts i i liked it it's so interesting to me because when I think about the book, I think about how problematic Raphael is. Well, okay, so it's funny. When I read the book initially, I really liked it. Exactly. I really liked exactly. it. Exactly. Loved it. Immediately picked up book yes. two and then ran with it. 100%. And then when we decided to read it, I went back and went, okay, I'm going to read it again. I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look at everything. And then went, uh, yeah. wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Raphael is really kind of problematic. He's he's a little creepy. He's a, kind of a creeper. But like, you don't care? You really don't, kind of don't. It's so weird. And I think it's partly because we're reading from Elena's perspective a lot of the time. And she doesn't mind that he's and a she creeper. Doesn't, and like, and even she acknowledges sometimes she's like, he's being a little creepy. Yeah. But because he's an archangel, like there's, there's certain like social aspects that you just kind of know are going to be off. I, I guess I so, guess. because in the society that they're living in, these archangels are above all. They're so old. They're old. They rule over everybody. They yeah. have, like, ultimate power. And actually, Raphael is kind of a special case because he still walks among humans. Like, he's still very much involved in the day-to-day ruling of his territory. Well, he's, like, the youngest archangel to ever be ever. an archangel. Yes. So he's, like, young. He's, like, very a kid. Young. Yes. So he's like, I'm not going to be one of these, you know, old guys. Well, and he gonna... doesn't rule through fear. Like, yeah. he's very much like, I would say like more of a modern yeah. kind of, he, like, ruler. He's in New York. Right. It's very cosmopolitan. Yes. So you're like, okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. And even Elena, when she first meets, like, their first meeting. Oh, my God. Was so crazy. I remember thinking, okay, so 
we have to know about what well, we have to know about Elena is of course she has a traumatic past because they all female always. main characters always in always. these urban fantasies always yes. have to have this traumatic past. Yeah. Has a traumatic past. She is hunter born, which yes. in this series means that she has heightened powers. Heightened powers. Yeah. In this case meaning she can scent vampires. Yes. And she has some s- strength yeah. and speed to fight these vampires and So she's them. like a step and a half above like Humans, humans, right? But she's not like immortal. Absolutely, she has not. a slightly lengthened lifespan, yeah. but she's not like she's still very delicate and frail. Yeah, <laughs> she's still <laughs> human <laughs> essentially. Yeah, but she's not like you know, but she's just slightly above them. Yes, and she's been called to Angel Tower, as yeah. they call it, <laughs> to meet with an archangel. Yeah, she goes to the rooftop, and there's this archangel at this table, set formally. And there's this guy, very attractive. Super attractive. Very hot. Yeah. And he's like, come have, you know, a meal with me. And he immediately tries to mind control her. Yes. Like, almost immediately off the bat. Yes. And she's like, nope. Not not going for not that. Not going to no, do this. Thank you. Yeah. And instead of holding the knife by the handle, is holding the knife by the blade. Blade. Yeah. And he's like... Hold the knife by the handle because you're just hurting yourself. And so instead of doing that, she just grips Gripping. the knife by the yeah. blade even harder. Yeah. And is like injuring herself. And he's like, What the fuck are you doing? Like, go with the knife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he also like sets a trap for her to yeah. see if her, like, to test her to yeah. see how good her, like, vampire hunting skills yeah. are. So he's like, these are brand new vampires that were just made a day ago. And let's see if you could really sense them. And she's like, yeah, I can. They're right there. And like, they also what? smell like rotten meat. It's right. not like it's a secret. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? And he's like, wow, okay, you're pretty good. I guess I'll hire you for this really horrible task that I need you to do. <laughs> even though it's so obvious that they were there because they smell like <laughs> rotten carry-on. It's not like even a secret. I know. All right. What? So that first meeting, like, all of us are going, what the fuck? What? Like, Elena, the audience, like, all of us are like, what is this guy's deal? Like, what is going on? And then the job he hires her for is not for vampires. No. It's for, like, some angel that's gone off the rails. I know. <laughs> and then you learn, you learn the most, like, the craziest shit about angels that nobody knows. knows. Yeah. It's been the secret for millennia. Yeah. And that's how vampires are, are made. made. And, like, literally an angel lost his wings because he shared the secret secret with someone. Yes. Like, like it's lost. so secret, no one can talk about it. Exactly. Right? So, but I loved the world building in this. Yes. I thought it was really interesting the way that she brought it all together. The fact that there are these archangels that control certain territories in the world, the entire world. Mm-hmm. Um. Raphael, obviously, is in New York, but he controls a huge swath of, like, North America. I mean, most of North America, I think, is his territory. So, and, like, they just, like, kind of divide it up between them, and they're all, like, in control of these places. I remember when I suggested the series to you, you're like, oh, vampires. I don't like vampires. I'm not into the vampire And I remember going, okay, but it's not really about vampires. It's not, though. And and that (laughs) I do think that I appreciate the way that she... Because it's a series about angels. Yes. And vampires are a part of it because of the angels. I know. Because it's weird it's how she so does it. It's funny. It's different. It's different. But I love it, too, because the the vampires are, like, part of society. Like, yeah. they're not these, like, secret, in the shadows kind of people. Yes. Like, they are, they have jobs. They have jobs. They have families. Like, there's, like, all this stuff that, that are just, they're just... This is just another part of them. And I remember t- trying to tell him, like, okay, they're vampires, but they're different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I couldn't explain it to you. Yeah, I know. I'm like, okay, but because yeah, they're vampires. Because you can't explain it until you read it. It doesn't make sense. I know. I'm like, okay, but they're vampires, but they're different. <laughs> I know. You have to read it. <laughs> and it's funny, too, because, like, the first vampire you really meet is Dimitri. Yeah. And he, I, I mean, I'm sorry, even in this book, he's fucking awesome. He is awesome, but he's also an ass. He is an ass. And he's... Elena calls him on it constantly. I also appreciate that one of the first things that Elena does to Dimitri is like slit his fucking yeah. throat. She's like, I'm done with you. I'm like, I can't take you anymore. I'm going to ki- stop Absolutely. Yep. Yep. I know. <laughs> and he's so mad. He's so pissed off. 
Because of course he doesn't die because he's no, a vampire. He's a vampire. She knows that he's not going to die. He's an old ass vampire. He's like so one of the old. oldest vampires yes. like in existence. Yes. And she knows he's not going to kill him. Yes. But she's like, I'm leaving. Yeah. And you're going to let me leave. Yeah. You need to knock it the fuck off. <laughs> I know. She does it as like to teach him. I know. <laughs> like you have no control over me. Yeah. I I am leaving. Yeah. <laughs> It was awesome. It was so good. <laughs> I love Elena, actually, because she is mortal. Yes. And yes, she has, like, slightly heightened skills. But compared to these angels, she's she's a baby. Yeah. Like, she is so delicate and yeah. so fragile. and But she's still just like, I'm not putting up with your shit. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. All the time. Just All the time. Just constantly, like, calling them on it and being like, no, no. that's bullshit. I'm yeah. going to do my own thing. I am in control of me. Yeah. I am me. I will do my own thing. Exactly. You do not get to tell me what to do. Exactly. And like Raphael, his, his whole shtick is that whatever woman he was involved with, even he had a harem at one point. Yep. Whatever. Any woman he was involved with, he protected and took care of. Yep. And she was like, nope. No, I don't want that. That is not me. No. You do not control me. Exactly. You don't protect me. No. I am me. I don't need that. I protect me. Exactly. That is not who I am. Yeah. And you need to come to terms with that Mm -hmm. or I am not yours. Mm -hmm. That is how this is. And it's hard for him to reconcile that because he's fucking old. He's so old. He's so old. But but by Archangel standards, he's young. Yeah. Yeah. And by... By having her in the vicinity and he starts to get feelings for her and, like, it makes him slightly more mortal. Which is interesting. Yeah. Because he's, like, able to be injured. hmm So, like, she shoots him at one point because he's being creepy as fuck. Yeah. And she's like, what is wrong he's, with like, you? He's, like, seducing her in his office. Yeah. And he's, and she's like, no. No, this is a work meeting. Yeah. What Why are, are you doing? sexually harassing me? He goes to her apartment and freaks her the fuck out. He's like hovering outside mm-hmm. her apartment, like like watching and her. And like this is when he was like cold. Yeah. So like he doesn't have any emotions, which was also weird as hell. I know. And she's just like, you're freaking me the fuck out and you need to stop. And he does it. And so she shoots him. Yeah. And then he just keeps bleeding. I know. And she goes, what's wrong with you? And he's like, well, you. Yeah. <laughs> and she goes, wait, what? What? What are you talking about? And then instead of backing the fuck off, he buys her like the most rare rose yeah. in existence. Like a diamond that has been carved into a rose. Yeah. And she sends it back the next day. She goes, I can't accept this. What is this? Inappropriate. What are you doing? The fuck? Yeah. I love her so much. Yeah, she's so good. I love her so much. <laughs> she gets it. She's like, nope. Yeah. She does not like I it. don't know what this yeah. is. This, what? But it's funny because like throughout the book, she is drawn to him in a way. Like, she is also, like, interested. She She's like, I don't know what your deal is. I mean, they do give in to the temptation, but even, yes. even while they are seeing each other, she's like, look, we are exclusive. Yeah. you. I am not some toy that you get to just sleep with and, and also you can't just be overprotective of no. me like i am going to do what i'm gonna do and you have to be okay with that you gave me a job yeah. i am a guilt hunter right. i have a job i have a thing to i have exactly. i am me yeah. once we do this i once we sleep together once we fuck yeah. i'm not yours right i'm not your possession you and you can't think that i am exactly yeah so when he tries it she's like no no nope. we're not doing that no 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 exactly or this is over yeah no no no, no. yeah and he has a hard time with that. Yeah, he does not like he it. He does not like that at all. But I love his little, like, group of men. They're all men. They which are is all unfortunate. Men. That is unfortunate. This was, like, an early 2000s, I want to yeah. say, novel. So there there was some time between. Yeah. This was, so, I feel like this is pretty fitting for a 2000s Yeah, I agree. Novel. And, like, they were all really interesting and diverse yes. characters. So yes. it didn't bother me that much. And they all have their own books like they all have that's like what the series is is they all get their own story yeah which i thought was really interesting and all of the female characters badass smart interesting absolutely like fully formed complex women for sure yeah i will say that yeah i also do say that it's good that he commands such loyalty from the people around him his ruling style is so different from any of the other archangels like he is not he is not about ruling through fear. He is not. He he wants loyalty, so he brings people in that will challenge him when he's wrong. 
He wants someone who's strong enough to say, yes. uh, I don't think this is right. Yes. Which which really sets him apart from any of the other angels. Like yes. nobody else is really looking for that, which I really appreciated about him. For sure. Yeah. It's just that Elena <laughs> challenges him in a way. <laughs> He's not used to. He's not used to. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So, From the get-go, he finds her interesting and strong and appreciates, even as a mortal person, how strong and independent and smart she is. And yeah. and I like that about him. Yeah. For sure. I, 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 and again, it's in a way that made him grow and learn. Yes. As opposed to just fighting against. Yeah. In a way. Like, well, I thought it was interesting, too, because he goes to one of the other archangels, Lishwan, Le- and she is like, something's happened to me. I met this mortal woman, and she's like, you need to kill her. She's going to she's going to lessen you. Yes. You need to do something. And instead of doing that, he's like, you know what? No, I don't think that this is lessening me in, in any way. I think this is making me a di- different, sure. Right. But I'm not sure that it's a bad thing. I'm not seeing it as a weakness, necessarily. So I right. think that that also, like, so it's such a different way to see it. Right. As opposed to... I don't know. Right. The, the way of seeing power. Yeah. That it wasn't just power. Right. That having that bit of weakness was not a weakness. Right. But maybe a bit of strength. Yeah. That it was, it was interesting. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And that the men he had around him were often looked at as misfits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he saw them as people with strength. Yes. And used them as such. Yes. He was very good at recognizing what he needed to, I don't know, support him. So it's like Dimitri's really good at recognizing the problem, solving the problem. Like he is like the day-to-day kind of person. And then like Venom is kind of his like secret weapon. He just like sends him in. Jason, the spy, like, like they all serve a function for him. But they're all his friends like he really considers them to be friends of him and they are very loyal to him because they also see him as a friend exactly yeah exactly yeah and i did it was interesting because dimitri was the one who clocked elena in the beginning as someone who who was like oh you had a vampire in your past Mm -hmm. really young maybe i shouldn't do this to you anymore sorry yeah. Because when guilt, so Elena is something called a, like a, like a vamp, like she's a hunter born. Yeah. And hunter borns have like very few weaknesses. And one of them is that very old vampires have like a lure. <laughs> they can seduce you. Yeah. With like a scent. And Dimitri was totally. Oh, he was messing with her every time. Totally trying acted. to seduce yeah. Elena. Because yeah. he's like, you're not after my man. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm loyal to Raphael. I'm going to protect him at all costs. I don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. I'm going to protect him. Yep. So he's trying to seduce Elena. And Elena's not having any of this shit. No. Because she's a fucking vampire hunter. She knows her, she knows her she's business. She's the best at her job, basically. She is. Yeah. And she's she's not putting up with this shit. And then he realizes how sensitive she is to it. Because he's, like, not even doing it half yeah. the time. He's just literally walking around. Yeah. But he's old. Oh. And he just is admitting it mm-hmm. half the time. Without even realizing it. Without even realizing it. Yeah. And he's like, you must have been exposed to this really young. Yeah. Which she was. Uh, yeah. That's her traumatic past. Coming traumatic back. past mm-hmm. coming back to haunt her. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a whole... Uh, that comes... We don't even really learn about that for books. books. It takes a long time for her to even talk about it. Yeah. Like, even when... Like, she's intimate with Raphael and yeah. she has a nightmare and he's like what is happening and she's like can't talk about it yet can't talk about it yet and he just goes okay you'll talk about it when you're ready I guess but it's bad it's bad it's bad yeah bad news but I do want to talk a little bit about the lore of the angels because it's so it's just it's so unique I know because it's it plays on Christianity but not but not yeah which I thought was really intriguing. Yes. As an ex-Christian. Because they don't really talk about God at There's all? no God. There's no Christ. Yeah. It's just it's angels. It's just angels. And I really liked that, actually. I agree. It, I found I it fascinating. Really appreciated that there was no higher being. Yeah. There was no redemption. Mm-hmm. 
it was just angels. Yeah. It drew me in immediately. Yeah. Yeah. I really liked that about this And I liked series. it too because the first book especially, which is what we're talking about, like, you don't really understand what purpose the vampires serve. Like, you know that they're servants of the angels in some way and they're, like, somehow related, but you don't really know how how until right. the very end and ellen is broken destroyed like gonna die and Raphael is just spilling all of his secrets to her and it's just like here's all the secrets because i know you're gonna die exactly it doesn't mean anything i'm just trying to keep you alive for as long as i can right. and and then of course she doesn't because <laughs> the ambrosia comes in he's like i kiss you now and now you're an angel but like it's just fascinating to me because you look at the, the at the vampires and like yeah the newly made ones like they have our time controlling their thirst or whatever but like they're fully functioning in society yeah like they have jobs they have like all these things that they are just like and living their lives well in like the beginning you're like why is there why is the guild hunter like center yes controlled by angels why are the angels sending out yes humans. To, to go hunt, hunt out yes. vampires. Yep. Why are the angels in control of this? Exactly. And no one's questioning it. Nope. It's just how it is. Yep. No one's wondering about any of this. And then at the end of the book, you go, oh. oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it all comes together so neatly and so cleanly. And yeah. It's just like, this makes so much sense. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And then having Urum. Who- yeah. Bad news. Bad news. Bad news. So what? Ha- so the lore again. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> so angels have a toxin in their blood. It just builds up naturally over time, and it takes a long time. It's not something that yes. happens like fast. It's slow. Yeah. But if you don't get rid of it by creating vampires, then you become basically insane. Yeah. You become a bloodborne, bloodborne. angel. And one of the things that was confusing everybody is that a lot of the traits that Urim was having were vampire traits. Yes. And everyone's like, what's happening? Yeah. What's going on? But one of the other things is most angels that go bloodborne are just regular angels. Yeah. And more easy to kill or it's contain. It's very rare for an archangel to have this happen. Yes. Yeah. And archangels are so powerful. So powerful. And it's so hard to contain or And kill. it really takes another archangel to bring them down. Yes. Like, it's bad. Yeah. It's really bad. And so when Urim was starting to go just completely AWOL and completely just off the rails, yeah. no one knew what was going on because it was so rare. Yeah. And he was sacrificing people. He was taking people's hearts. And, he and was... they, don't want to, they don't want to admit that this is something that could happen. So right. So they hesitated so long because they just didn't want to admit that this was something that was even possible because they're like this is something that we could ha- that happened to us exactly exactly this is the weakness we have yes which is a very human thing to well, do yeah it's scary you don't yeah. want to you don't want to believe it because yeah. it makes it real yeah yeah so when they brought in elena and she's tracking him like a vampire she's like this is weird yeah. <laughs> who is this person yeah because they gave her no information none they were just like there's a possible serial killer we need you to find. And yeah. it's just like, uh. And then she finds a place where, like, a bunch of people's hearts are ripped out. Yeah. It's like, what is going on? It was, like, seven or yeah. nine or I can't remember what the exact number was. But, but then she meets up with Michaela, who's a whole other problem. Let's talk about Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> because she's also an archangel. Yeah. And she was, like, Urim's lover. Like, yeah. they were together. And she is so jealous. So jealous of Elena. because she also wants to be with Raphael. I'm saying it Elena like the British do, but I, I think know. it's Elena. I think I don't know. I I don't, I don't know either. I think that Elena Singh is um, New Zealander, so okay. she probably says it like the British. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll I don't see. know. Whatever. We'll just say it both ways and yeah. see. <laughs> we'll see. It is, but but it's so that like they're so antagonistic toward each other from the jump. Like Michaela hates Elena. Hates her, and Elena's just like. I didn't do anything to you, so I fucking hate you, hates too. Like, her. what are you doing? Like, he yeah. hates her from the get-go. Yeah. And, like, Elena just meets her, and Michaela says something, and Elena's like, well, fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't like you now. Yeah. I mean, it was like... Well, and she sets her, like, little vampire, like, head vampire against her. And yeah. It's like, go get her and kill her, and, and now Raphael's mad. Yeah. Like, it's a whole thing, and the it's just like, Michaela, thing. what are you doing? Like, just stop. 
And Raphael tries to be like, stop doing that. Yeah. And Michaela's like, no. Yeah. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And it's like, okay, but I'm going to kill your vampire then. Okay, but how much do we like Raphael's butler? <laughs> oh, so much. He's so good. Montgomery. I, I love him. <laughs> I love so him so good. much. I know. Ah. He's so good. He's I a- will say most, like, this is why, so Raphael is like, a little bit creepy and a little bit problematic, but he surrounds himself with so many people that I genuinely love. Yeah. Then I'm like, okay, he can't be that bad. Bad? Because, because people love him. All of these people love him. They are so loyal yes. to him. They are willing to give their lives yes. for him. Well, and that's the thing. And Urim, that's what Urim uses against him. Yes. It's because Urim is like, okay, I'm going to take this woman. Yeah. Because I know that Raphael will do whatever it takes yeah. to keep her safe. Yep. He's going to come, no matter what, and protect her. Exactly. And I'm like, okay. And that's what, I mean, that's what the morally gray girl is like. Like, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what the cost is for the world. It doesn't matter. He will come and save her at the cost of the world. Yeah. Because he loves her. Exactly. And I I will admit that that is, that is. I mean, it's sexy. It's hot as fuck. It's hot absolutely absolutely yeah is it the best thing to do probably not probably not he destroys a big chunk of new york yeah which is problematic yeah but he does he does send his people in to try to clear it like yeah. he he does he tries to mitigate the damage as he much does as possible. try to mitigate the damage but he absolutely is like i am going to save her yeah no matter what and he and i mean like they have a big fight they do. And he destroys Urim. And Elena's dying. She is absolutely broken. There is no way she's coming back from that. And it is literally almost like a fall from grace. Oh, yeah. It is very symbolic. For sure. They are falling from the sky. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It is one of the most iconic scenes I have ever read in a book. Yeah. That's the one that sticks out in my mind yeah. the most. There are two scenes in this book that yeah. stick out in my brain. The initial meeting. The initial ne- meeting where is she, he's trying to like test all of her skills. Yep. And then that scene where they are falling from the sky. Yeah. She is dying. Yeah. And then transforming. And he gives, he's like, we're going to die together then. Yeah. Like he's just like, okay. He can't save her. Yeah. He, there's no way. Yeah. And if he can't save her. Yeah. Then he he's not going to live without her. Because he doesn't even know about the Ambrosia as an option. No. Like, that's not something that they talk about. So he doesn't even know that it's possible to change her to an angel. And the only thing is that he, like, tastes it in his mouth. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to kiss you. Yeah. And it's like, shit. It's like instinct. Accident. It's just like instinct. I know. He's like, I don't know why, but I'm going to do this thing. It's like the most, I, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. That scene was so good. Oh, my God. It was so good. Oh, my God. And then, like, all the angels come and, like, take him away. And all her friends are like, what is happening? I know. <laughs> uh, can we talk about Guild Hunter had yes. HQ, though? And how Bond-like it is? Yes. I yeah. loved everything about it. It was so good. It um, was so good. Everything about it. I know. It was so Bond-like. Yes. Every- the, the one guy that, like, literally lives, like, in the basement in the center. Like- <laughs> I know. He's like... Wasn't he wheelchair bound? Mm -hmm. And he just like wheels around in there. Yeah. And like just does all the technological stuff. Yeah. And like makes weapons. Yeah. And like tosses them at people. And he knows everything from everywhere. Like (laughs) it's so good. I loved him so much. I know. He was amazing. I know. He knew everything. He had cameras everywhere. And I'm like, oh my God, he's cute. He is. I know. It's so good. (laughs) I know. I loved him so much. Her friend Sarah. Oh, Sarah was amazing. Was amazing. Like, she does not stop hounding Raphael until she can see Ellen. Yes. She's like, she's still alive. You have to let me see her. I don't care where she Every is. Every day, she's bugging him yeah. about seeing her. It's like, I don't care if you're an archangel. I don't care who you are. Like, you need to let me see her. Yeah. She's not afraid for herself at all. Yeah. But very concerned about Elena. Yeah. And that is a true friend. Absolutely. So. For sure. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> and then who's the angel who's like in strip clubs all the time but has no wings? Who's that guy? No wings. He got his wings cut off. Well, Ilium had his wings Ilium. cut off, but they grew back. Isn't he in strip clubs all the time, though? Probably. He's yeah. very attractive. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He has a good time. He does lose his wings again, and they grow back even prettier. Yeah, he does. But he lost his wings because he shared a secret. Or was that Jason? 
I don't think it was Jason. No, it was Ilium. He was shared Ilium. he shared a secret, like all the angel secrets. And that's right. And he's like flirty, flirty mm-hmm. with Ilium, but it's like I not... loved him though. He was like like the boyish, like yeah. young. And he's flirty, flirty, but not yeah. because he's like convinced he's never gonna find love again. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I loved him. I will say most of the characters, like, even though the bulk of them are men. <laughs> Like, they were really interesting and, like, complex people. I, I w- do wish there were more women yes. that she could talk to as a woman. I agree with not that. Not about, like, boys. I agree with that. I'm not sure that this book would pass the Benchel test. I was going to say, I was actually, <laughs> I was doing my notes for this, and I'm going, and all of a sudden I went, does this pass the Benchel test? Which is, which is such a small bar. Like, it's so I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually doing it, and I'm going, But I, I actually... will say, as the series progresses... The women become more and more interesting and more and more complex. I do agree. Yeah. I do agree. So, yeah. I, I like, it's hard because the first book is always about setting up the world and the lore Which is and how it the goes. characters. And a lot of these, like, Alona Andrews. Yes. This series. Yeah. A lot of these have... October Day. Like, there yeah. are so many things where you have to just set up all this lore. A lot of these really long yeah. series are like this. Yeah. So, I'm very forgiving with exactly. the first book. Yeah. Absolutely. But I do think it's really funny because, actually, like, one of my notes, I'm like, <laughs> Does it whole pass the army test? of loyal soldiers <laughs> equal men? Yeah. Exactly. Where are the women besides Elena? When I... was this written? <laughs> <laughs> I know. But it's so well written that you don't... Really oh no! I sped it? through this. Yeah, it was, like it was fast paced. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. I was not like it wasn't distracting. I was never bored. I was never upset. Like like there are so many books that I've read where I just get mad. Yeah, because I'm like, where are the fucking women? No, like, the misogyny wasn't. There was no misogyny no. that was so blatant that I went fucking hell. Exactly. Exactly. So it wasn't so bad. Yeah, where I was like, ugh. Yeah, it was just a. a you know, for the time, yeah. it was what it was. It was in like 2000. <laughs> exactly. And it did get a lot better as the series went Absolutely. On. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed the entire series. Oh, God. I yeah. demolished the series. <laughs> yeah. It demolished. So good. And the sex so good. was really good. Yeah. I know. The angel dust. Oh, my God. The <laughs> angel dust. She woke up covered in angel dust and was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and he's like. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I loved the fact that it was the guy who was, like, accidentally dusting her. <laughs> so I can't control the angel dust. So sorry about that. I really, when I get too excited, I try to dust it. And she's like, ew. What is it, though? <laughs> when I feel a little too strongly about somebody, I kind of get a little dusty. I don't know what to do it's about so- that. And she's like, well, it. stop it. I don't do it anymore. That's so funny. That's so funny. Oh, so I love funny. it so much. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. Jeez. Yeah, I really enjoyed this book. Like, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. It because was... from the description, like, it's so hard with these books. Because yeah. you read the description and you're like, that doesn't, I don't know. Well, and you weren't sold on the vampires either. No, I have a hard time with vampires. I, I just don't find dead people sexy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not really about the vampires. It's not. It's not at all. I mean, even the later books where yeah. it is about the vampires, it's not. Like, that's not why they're sexy. Yeah. Like, it's about who they are. Yeah. So, it worked for me. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. And also the way they become vampires. Like, it's just very different from what you usually get with vampires. Agreed. So, 100%. I-, I found it fascinating. For sure, yeah. I, I like the way she she tied it all together, and it all worked. And it came together, and you're just like, click. Yep. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely so. agreed. Okay, so next time, we're going to read <laughs> Tentacles and Teeth. By Rowan Merrick. <laughs> this is another Evelyn pick, so we'll see. Oh, it's so good. We'll see what Danielle is in for. <laughs> oh, it's so good. No, this is actually this is really good world building. You'll like it. Okay. Yeah. I'm interested. I'm interested to see it. We'll see. But like uh, it. this is Intoxicated Literature. I am Daniela Drake. And I'm Evelyn Crowell. I hope to see you next time. Woo! Thank you for joining us for this episode of Intoxicated Literature. Drink well, friends. <laughs>